Okay, so we saw before an example of a PHP program, uh, Hello World, and it was pretty boring. It was a bunch of echo statements. And the reason it was just a bunch of echo statements, we actually saw this, is that uh, PHP programs are often run via a web server. Somebody makes a web request, the server says, hey, you're looking for a PHP file. I'm not gonna give you back that file. It's a program, I'm gonna run that program and whatever the program prints, that's what I, the server, will give back to the client who requested it. Um, and so it's important to remember that when you run a PHP program, what you see in the browser, you can do a view source of the page you get back, and we did this, uh, and we just see whatever was printed. We don't really know that we, the client, doesn't really know that it came from a program. Um, but yeah, it turns out PHP is a common uh, language run by the server. And I should mention there's nothing special about the language PHP for this. Uh, I can imagine a system where if you ask for a URL that happens to end in .java, a server might say, hey, you're asking for a .java? I'm not going to give you that file. I'm going to go and compile the file and then run the file. And then whatever output that file printed, that's what I'll give back to the person requesting this URL. Um, and there's no reason why a server couldn't be configured to do that. Okay, and in fact, to emphasize that PHP programs are not tied just to the web, we're going to spend a couple days, uh, about one day, avoid writing PHP programs and not touching the web whatsoever and not running them over the web, uh, to emphasize that. So, let's go ahead and look here. I'm going to go ahead and let's make our, our first PHP program. I'm just going to edit a file. You can edit in... Um, whatever editor you care to use, uh, Notepad++, or I'm going to use a command line Vim or Emacs or something like that. Um, don't use Word. It doesn't know about code. It doesn't know how to indent. Um, it uses weird fonts. Uh, at any rate, uh, we'll make a file. It doesn't really matter how. Uh, I'll go ahead and call this blend1.php. Blend we only have several versions here. Okay. Um, and here's the assigned task. I want to go ahead and have a function that takes in two words uh, and do what linguists call a blend. Okay, so uh, for example, what do you get happens happens when you have uh, smoke and fog? You get smog. Okay, or if you're driving, you're on a road trip and you're driving along and oh, I wish we'd stop at a, a hotel, maybe not a full-fledged hotel, a motor hotel. I wish we had a motel. Yeah, so those are linguistic blends. Um, we're not going to do anything smart like blending on, on suffixes or, or, or syllables or phonemes or anything like that. Uh, we're just going to say, hey, to blend two words, take the first half of the first word, the second half of the second word, and stick them together. Okay? So for an example, um, I'm going to go ahead and type, type this blend of... Uh, so I'll go ahead and put these in, smoke and fog. Uh, we expect to get back, when we do this, we expect to get back smog and blend of motor and hotel. We expect to get back motel. Okay. Uh, let's look at something else. Blend of, gosh, it's been a, a nice snow day weekend. What happens if we blend rain and snow? Okay, I want the uh, first half of rain and the second half of the word snow. What happens when I take those? The first half of the word rain is R-A. Second half of the word snow is O-W, so we get row. That's what we should really call a blend of rain and snow. Um, notice, of course, that's different than a blend of snow and rain. If we blend snow and rain, what do we get? We take the first half of the first word, S-N, and the second half of the second word, I N and we get snin. Okay, great. So let's just make sure we understand the problem. Um, what happens if we were to blend uh, Christiansburg and Virginia? Go ahead and type that out uh, and give me the exact answer. There's exactly one correct answer that we would to find it. The first half of the first word and then the second half of the second word. Oh, I 
miscounted them and go back again. That takes a little bit of, of work here. Um, yeah, so I'll, uh, while you're doing that, I'll be doing it here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen letters in Christiansburg. So the first half of that would be three letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven letters. Christy. And then Virginia. So India. So hopefully the answer you got was Christy India. Uh, if you didn't, if you only had one eye in there, uh, eh, we need to, you know, think about these things closely, exactly what you want character for character. So, okay. Um, so you're all happy, right? You're like, great, we're, we're good, we're set to write this. By the way, uh, before you write a program in, in any language from your Java 1 onward, uh, what do you do before you actually start coding? Make test cases, okay? And that's what we've actually done here. We have a bunch of test cases, blend, and I've actually written it as real code. If I call blend a smoke and fog, and that's an actual, that's correct PHP syntax for calling a function called blend, if there were such a function. So there isn't yet, we'll write it in a moment. Okay. Um, so, okay, uh, let's just make sure you know it. Go ahead and give me one more. Give me blend of uh, Radford and Univ. What string do we get? expect to get back for that? Okay, now maybe you caught on to this before. Um, hopefully you're all up in arms right now, borrowing what, what, what's going on. Uh, if, if your boss had said, hey, write the function blend, takes the first half, second half, blah, blah, um, you would go off and say, oh, okay, no problem, and go off and start developing test cases, and before you ever got to coding, you'd say, wait a minute, uh, what if the string has an odd number of letters? I can't split a string in the middle of a letter, uh, and Radford has such a, the word Radford has seven letters, What's the first half of that? Is it R-A-D or is it R-A-D-F? Um, and you go back to your boss and you ask for clarification. You're like, hey, this, the spec you gave me, uh, it was a bunch of English words, not quite uh, precise. What do you want to do in this situation here? Okay, in this case, the boss, which I guess is, is me here for this class, uh, I'm going to say, okay, yeah, great. Uh, when we split a word, uh, I'm going to say the halfway point, we're going to round it down if it's odd. So, uh, in particular, the word Radford, uh, with seven letters, we'll take the splitting point as being after the third character. So the first three characters is the first half, and the last four is the second half. So, okay, so we've got rad, and then univ with a dot there, that's actually uh, five letters long, so where's the splitting point for that? Oh, this, the splitting point we round down, so it's after two letters, so the second half is actually three letters, three characters long, I, V, period. So, okay. Um, and this is a quick little introduction. Now, some of you may have been wondering right off the bat, you may have seen smoke and fog and motor and hotel and sort of said, hey, they're, uh, the midpoints of those words isn't quite well defined. Um, and so you might have been wondering back then, if not, writing the test cases before you write code, gets us to figure out what we need to do before we've committed a bunch of code and then just decide, oh wait, we have some situation we hadn't thought of where we need to do it differently. Um, that's why you write test cases first. That's one reason why you write test cases first. Okay, um, great. This is going to be uh, some, some actual code. Uh, well, these are, it's not quite PHP as it stands, it's just a bunch of different things. Uh, I'm gonna go and actually make this a real test case by putting this. Now, we haven't really seen full PHP before. We saw one example that was a bunch of echo statements. We'll do, for now, we'll do something similar. I'm gonna add the word echo at the front of each of these lines. semicolon at the end of each line. Oops. Uh, this now is, is correct code. And I'm actually going to prepend. I'm going to say they come in pairs. First is what we, I'm going to call blend, and it's going to print whatever blend actually returns. And then I'm going to go ahead and say expect smog. Okay, so I get uh, two words. Um, the actual, and I, I, I should go ahead and say desired, maybe. Um, 
the actual output from the desired output. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put a word actual in front of each of the actual calls. Uh, just so when it prints, I go ahead and get, it's gonna print out and say actual, and then on the next line, desired, and what we want, so. Okay, uh, fill in the word desired, going here in real time. Uh, you go ahead and make this file yourself. Okay, um, this now, we haven't written the function blend, but this is genuine PHP code and will run, uh, and is our test cases. So, uh, the one last thing we need to do for PHP code is uh, put the whole file, we're gonna wrap it in uh, question mark, uh, sorry, angle bracket question mark PHP, and then close that at the very bottom angle, or uh, question mark angle bracket. We saw that in the hello world too, if you looked at that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go and quit my editor. I had that file there, I called it blend1.php. I can actually run this from the command line. I don't need to run it through the web. Um, to run it from the command line, you can either install PHP on your own computer, or you can go ahead and uh, SSH to Rux. There are directions on the desire to learn uh, discussion boards on how to do that. Uh, connect to Rux and just run it from the command line there. Uh, so you say blend.php, and it's gonna run, oh, I called it blend1, sorry about that. PHP, and then the name of the file I want to run. Okay, it printed out the word actual, and then we, oh, we got a fatal error, call to the undefined function blend. Well, yeah, you're right, I haven't defined blend yet, so I kind of thought that was gonna be coming. Uh, no problem, uh, we're gonna go and talk a little bit more about test cases, and then we'll go ahead and actually write the function blend.